Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Before we look into the practice questions, we have two important announcements. As part of the Target Prelims 2022, the topic for tomorrow's discussion would be art and culture places in use. Some of the important questions will be discussed as part of this initiative. So please do tune in from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. and the session will be conducted by Abhishek Mishra sir. Another announcement is in reference to the free IAS workshop. How to crack UPSC CSE 2023 which will be conducted on 8th of May 2022. What is that you have to do? Follow the details given in the description of the video and give the necessary information and you would be able to attend this free IAS workshop. Let's get started and look into the first question. Consider the following pairs. We have Tiger Reserve on one side, the state it is present in on another side. Achankama, Chhattisgarh, Annamalai, Tamil Nadu, Kaval, Telangana. Which of the above pairs is are correctly matched? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Annamalai Tiger Reserve. So remember, Annamalai Tiger Reserve is in the state of Tamil Nadu. Let's look at some of the important facts with respect to Annamalai Tiger Reserve. When we speak about Annamalai Tiger Reserve, it is also called as the Annamalai Tiger Reserve or Annamalai Wildlife Sanctuary. Earlier, it was called as Indira Gandhi Wildlife Sanctuary and National Park. Where is it situated? It is situated in Annamalai Hills of Tamil Nadu state. The Tiger Reserve spans over two districts, which is of Coimbatore as well as Tirupur. So remember, UPSC can also ask a question in which of these two districts do we have the Anamalai Tiger Reserve. So it is Coimbatore as well as Tirupur. A region within the Anamalai Wildlife Sanctuary was declared as a Tiger Reserve in the year 2007 under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Another point of from the preliminary examination point of view is which are the tribal groups who are present in this particular habitat. As per the Tamil Nadu State Forest Department, there are about six scheduled tribes living in the region with their population of more than 5000 which includes Malasa, Malay Malasa, Kada, Muduwar, Pulayar as well as Eravalar. So remember Malay Malasa happens to be one of the primitive tribal group which is endemic to the region of Anamalais. These are some of the important facts that you have to remember from the preliminary examination point of view. And as the question denotes, we have Achankama, which belongs to the state of Chhattisgarh, and we have Kaval, which belongs to the state of Telangana. And as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section which are the other tiger reserves which are present in the state of Tamil Nadu. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to protection of children from Sexual Offences Act 2012, which is also called as the POXO Act, which of the following statements is are correct? There is no time or age bar for reopening sexual offences under the POXO Act. It is a general neutral law. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is both. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the POXO Act. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, it says there is no time or age bar for reporting sexual offences under the POXO Act. What do we mean by it? Let's assume for a moment there is a child. Who is a child? Any individual who is less than 18 years of age. This child has gone through a sexual assault. The child is now in trauma. It does not know how to express this. The child is also in an apprehension and fear as well. The child does not know whom to communicate this sexual assault. As a result, once this child attains the majority, which is after 18 years, let's assume this person is now at about 25 years or 30 years. The person realizes that this person had gone through a trauma when that person was about 15 years, 16 years or 17 years. So even after many years, this child who then becomes the major can recount on this particular incident and can file a case in the police station and the court of law will look into it. So basically it goes on to say there is no time or age bar for reporting sexual offences under the POXO Act. This means even if it is 5 years, 10 years after this incident, there is no age bar. So this particular person would be able to file a case 
with respect to the past incident with respect to the POXO Act. So the first statement is right. When you look into the second statement, it is a general neutral law. What do we mean by a general neutral law? When a rape is committed, it is not a general neutral crime, which means the aggressor will always be a male and the victim will always be a woman. That is what is called as female centric laws. So this is not a general neutral law. But when we consider a general neutral law, it means it is equally applicable both to the boys as well as to the girls. It is equally applicable to the male as well as the female. So when it comes to the POXO, any child who is less than 18 years of age, the law will be general neutral. What do we mean by general neutral? If there is a child, this particular child can be a boy or a girl. The perpetrator can also be a man or a woman as well. There have been number of instances where women are also put behind bars because they have been the aggressors. So in this particular case, a general neutral law means that the law is applicable both to the man as well as the woman and at the same time, the perpetrator can be a male or a female as well. So that is why the POXO happens to be a general neutral law and both the statements are right and the answer to this would be both. Now let's look at some of the important features with respect to the POXO Act. Child according to the Act are individuals aged below 18 years. The Act is general neutral. Different forms of sexual abuse including but not limited to sexual harassment, pornography, penetrative and non-penetrative assault are defined in this Act. What do we understand by aggravated sexual assault? It is that particular situation where the child is mentally ill or the abuse is committed by the person in position of trust such as doctor, teacher, policeman, family members, so on and so forth. To monitor the implementation of the POXO, we have the National Commission for the Protection of Child Rights and the State Commission for the Protection of Child Rights, which have been made the designated authorities, both being the statutory bodies. The Act calls for mandatory reporting of sexual offences. A false complaint with the intent to defame a person is also punishable under this Act. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements with respect to Sahitya Academy Award. It is the highest literary award in India. The literary work should be written by an Indian and published in India. It is awarded to writers who write in one of the scheduled languages only. Which of the statements given above is are incorrect? Since it is asking for the incorrect statement, the answer to this would be 1 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Sahitya Academy Award. When we look into the options, it says that Sahitya Academy Award is the highest literary award in India. This is a wrong statement. Why? Because when it comes to India, the Gnanapeet Award is the highest literary award in India. The second highest literary honor in India happens to be the Sahitya Academy, but the first and the highest happens to be the Gnanapeet Award. So the first statement is incorrect. When we look into the second statement, the literary work should be written by an Indian and should be published in India. Yes, this statement is right. So the person who is awarded this particular award will be from India and he should be a citizen of India and should hold Indian citizenship. So he should be Indian. So the second statement is right. When we look into the third statement, it is awarded to writers who write in one of the scheduled languages only. This is a wrong statement. Scheduled languages are 22 in number, but according to Sahitya Academy Award, it is given to as many as 24 languages. So apart from the scheduled languages, there are two other extra languages which are included as part of the Sahitya Academy Award. So please put it on the comment section, which are these two languages which are given the awards apart from those mentioned under the eighth schedule. Do remember, the academy is under the central government's Ministry of Culture. It works as an autonomous institution and this academy was established by first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, who was also its first chairman. What are the general rules and eligibility criteria for the Sahitya Academy Award? The book must be a remarkable contribution to the language and literature to which it belongs. The literary work or book should be first published in any of the languages 
recognized by the Sahitya Academy during the five years prior to the year immediately preceding the year of the award. The literary work should be written by an Indian and published in India. The book or literary work should not be a work of translation or an anthology of multiple authors. Now let's look into the next practice question. The Bay of Pigs invasion is related to which amongst the following countries? Cuba, Iran, Libya, Ukraine. The answer to this is Cuba. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the Bay of Pigs invasion. Where is Bay of Pigs? It is in Cuba. Where is Cuba? It is in Atlantic Ocean. And what is this incident related to? It is related to relationship between United States of America as well as Cuba. Cuba and United States of America had a Treaty of Paris where Cuba had become US protectorate from 1898 up until 1902 which persisted even after independence. So until 1959 what we had was a government in Cuba which was tilted in favor of United States states of America. But in 1959, what we had is a change of guard. So one of the persons called as Fidel Castro happened to establish a revolutionary socialist state in Cuba after his successful revolt against President Fulgarico Batista. Until 1959, any political party or a person ruling Cuba had a close relationship with United States of America. After 1959, we had Fidel Castro who starts ruling Cuba, he starts governing Cuba and as a result, he shifts its allegiance towards the Soviet Union. So something has happened close by to United States of America. United States of America does not like it. Since Cuba was taken over by a revolution, some of the people who were against Fidel Castro were also funded by United States of America. So what exactly happens? This particular Bay of Pigs invasion is where some of the Cuban exiles were trained and these people were to invade from this particular part and take over Cuba, which is what is called as Bay of Pigs invasion, which was also funded by United States of America. This happened to be an abortive exercise. It was a failed mission. It was an unsuccessful mission of the United States of America in Cuba. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to furnace oil, consider the following statement. It is a product of oil refineries. Some industries use it to generate power. Its use causes sulfur emissions into environment. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2021. When we look into the first option, yes, furnace oil is a dark viscous residual fuel and it is a product of oil refinery. Some industries, yes, use it to generate power and the third statement is also right as it causes sulfur emissions into the environment. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Shigella infection. What is this Shigella infection? Shigella happens to be a type of bacteria that causes what is called a Shigellosis. It is a disease that affects the digestive system. It is found in the intestinal tract of an infected person and can spread through contaminated food or water. It can also spread by direct contact with the fecus of an infected person. So remember, this is a bacteria that causes an infection called a spigelosis. It is a condition which affects the digestive system. It causes what is called as bloody diarrhea and it produces enormous amount of stomach pain and fever in those infected and this particular infection is also contagious as well. What are the symptoms? diarrhea, fever, severe stomach pain, vomiting and fatigue. Where does this infection usually occur? As we just discussed, it spreads through the contaminated food or the water but it is usually occurring in such areas where they do not have enough sanitation. So it primarily affects the poor and the crowded communities where they do not have adequate sanitation or safe water. How do we prevent it? We have to drink only boiled water, maintain cleanliness, wash hands before eating, do not defecate in the open, do not eat stale or uncooked food, food should be always covered, kids with symptoms of diarrhea should not come in contact with others, use disinfectants in toilets and washrooms, avoid direct contact with symptomatic patients, those infected should refrain from cooking, fruits and vegetables should be properly washed before eating, those with symptoms should also consume ORS, tender coconut water and rice soup with salt 
and self medication should also be avoided as well so if we are able to hand wash about 70% can be prevented and at the same time what we have to do is exclude such people from conducting any of the activities in that particular area and these people should be completely isolated they should not be amongst the crowd as well and at the same time these people should be excluded from work food preparation and child care it is this that we have to understand with respect to this infection so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best